Hey guys, it's Kaylee. In today's video, I am going to be doing a full makeup tutorial on this dark look featuring warm, burnt orange, smoky eyes and a darker bronze metallic lip. After that, towards the end of the video, I will take you through a hair tutorial on how to get this romantic braid bun updo. But to get started with the makeup, guys, all you gotta do is prime your eyelids. That way the eyeshadows last longer and they look more pigmented. So what I'm using is the Benefit Cosmetics Stay Don't Stray in light medium. All right, once you got that down, then you can go ahead and start working on the eyeshadows. So I'm using a mixture today of Makeup Geek and Ofra Cosmetics. This first one is a lighter neutral brown with a blending brush. I'm working this through my crease from inner to outer corner, but what I'm doing is focusing the majority of the shadow in the center and then working my way inward and outward once I feel like I don't really have much product left on my brush. And that way you get a nice diffused effect and it just looks blended without you having to do extra work or using you know extra brushes to get the look so I'm just gonna repeat this on the other side same exact thing where you apply the uh, eyeshadow in the center and then work your way inward and then outward and for this I didn't really pick up any additional product all I did was just dip my brush into the shadow a few times and that was enough. So what I'm doing is just blending right over top the shade Tan Lines. And this is from Makeup Geek. I love this eyeshadow. It is so nice for when you're trying to like warm things up and kind of darken things up, give a little bit more color and dimension to your eye. And for this, really simple, I'm just using the same blending brush, but I'm working it mainly focusing in the outer corner of the crease area. And then I'm just gonna go through and make sure that those two shadows are blended in really nicely together by going in with a clean blending brush and just lightly like dusting off those edges there. Dusting off? I don't know why I said dusting off. Anyway, we're gonna keep going darkening things up, creating more dimension with another one of my most favorite eyeshadows right here. This is called Coco Bear. Definitely one of my most used from Makeup Geek. This is a great eyeshadow. I am applying it with a more dome-shaped blending brush into the outer V area. And then again, without picking up any product, I am just gonna blend the edges only through with the very first blending brush that we had used. So once you get that into the outer corner, then we can start working on the eyelid shades. And for that, I really wanted to start off with a base first because I wanted the eyelid shades to really stand out and to pop and um, just be really vibrant and glittery. So I used the Catrice Cosmetics Liquid Metal Gel Eye Pencil first. It gives a really nice liquid metallic effect and this totally looks cool on its own too by the way so it's very long lasting as well so it's not going to crease on you or anything like that but this is in the shade hazel the hoff so i laid that down first onto my eyelid and then i'm going to work right over top of that this gorgeous shade it's a foiled pigment eyeshadow from makeup geek in legend Definitely a legendary eyeshadow right here. It's so pretty. I felt like the base kind of just helped it come more alive. I just patted this right over top and I worked this on pretty thick, like very heavily, until it covered the entire eyelid area or just like that tiny little eyelid space. And then whatever was left on my brush, I just kind of worked it up into the crease very slightly and used my blending brush again from the beginning just to bring that into the crease a little more, make sure everything is blended nicely. Okay, so this is the next step right here. We're gonna put on the pigment Vegas Lights from Makeup Geek. I'm patting this on to my eyelid first. What I did was I sprayed it with a little bit of water so that way it would stick better. I don't want it to fall off, but I loved the look of the gold and then the bronze mixed together to get that kind of burnt orange effect. So I just patted that on very lightly right on top and again made sure that it blended up into that crease. So now last thing guys, I know I feel like it's like a lot but I really love the way it turned out. Yeah, so last eyeshadow is just the darkest one of them all and this is called Cabin Fever from Makeup Geek. So you just want to put that eyeshadow into again the outer V area. And you know I felt like I really needed this because I kind of lost a, a little bit of the eyeshadows we had put on from before with all of the blending from the eyelid shades. So I just wanted to make sure that that was like the outer corner was still dark. 
Go ahead and blend that out with a clean blending brush if you need to, and then you can go in with your eyeliner. So this is the Starlux Pro Eyeliner Pen. It's in black. I'm taking this through the inner corner to the outer corner, and then once I get to that outer corner there, I'm just winging it out by drawing a line going from the end of my eye upward towards my brow. Not all the way though, about like halfway. Basically like where my eyeshadows kind of end, and then I draw back down and meet it with the line on the eyelid that's really close to the lash line. So I'm just gonna do that for both eyes, get a nice dramatic black line going on there. Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna pop on some eyelashes. These are the Kiss Faux Mink Lashes, and I believe these are in Noir. Love the Kiss Faux Mink Lashes, very glam, very dramatic. I always use them when I'm doing a darker makeup look. I used my, um, this is brand new, it's from Glam Glow, it's called the Mega Illuminating Moisturizer, and this is in Nude Glow. I use this as a moisturizer and a primer all in one, because I love the way that this feels on my skin after I blend it all in, it just feels like I put a primer and moisturizer on all in one, so that's why. I was just like, I'm not gonna go in with anything else, this is cool, I'm gonna go in with my foundation now. So I used the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation in 2.3. So this foundation here, I really like it because it's super lightweight, but it still gives pretty good coverage. You could even layer this on and like to get like a more fuller coverage effect and it wouldn't feel like you have anything on your face and it just doesn't look cakey ever, which is why I love using it. So I applied that on with a oval brush. And then for the first time, I'm using this little concealer palette here I got from my BoxyCharm. I was just really curious about it to see how it worked. I liked that the um, consistency of these concealers were more on like the drier end of creams. So I felt like it would work really well as a base before I put my actual concealer on just to kind of brighten things up under my eye area and basically everywhere where I wanted to put the concealer. So I laid this down first. And also when you do a step like this, where you lay this down before your concealer, it's gonna help your concealer to last longer throughout the day without fading and it'll give it like, you know, something just to sit on and just stay on your face. I used the Tarte Maracuja, Kuja, Maracuja Creaseless Concealer in Medium. So I totally didn't like this concealer for like the longest time. I'm like, I don't know how to use this thing. It's so, uh, what's the word? Um, it just looks so like greasy and oily and I'm like it's not absorbing into my skin like how am I supposed to make this work and so it was just like sitting in my makeup collection for forever but then I realized the consistency of it is really similar to the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It has that same kind of feeling to it, that same kind of like glowy dewiness to it and I realized with these concealers what you have to do once you get them on is push them into the skin with a damp blending sponge first. So this is what I'm using here. Um, this is from Per Cosmetics. I also got it in my BoxyCharm box. So I wanted to give it a try because I really like the shape of it. It reminds me of my favorite Eco Tools one. But yeah, once you press it all in, you really have to set it with a powder. That is like the trick. You have to set it so that it mattifies itself and it looks so flawless. So yeah, I'm happy I finally figured out how to use these type of concealers because I'm like, this is not cute. This is not looking like this. I would set it with like a powder before, um, just with like a brush and like a pressed powder, but then I realized that just does not do the trick. You absolutely have to set it with like a loose setting powder and the blending sponge and that'll make it look perfect. But right now, before I do that step, I'm actually blending on a little bit of LA Girl Pro Concealer. This is in Toast. It's like a, a darker shade. I just wanted to lay something down to kind of contour out my face first before I went in with all my bronzer. I just wanted to get a little more shape going on there. I felt like, you know, when you put your foundation on, you can't really see yet. <laughs> that happened. You can't really see, you know, the the lines of your face. It just kind of like blocks everything out. So I, I felt like I needed to bring the life back to my face with a little bit of contour. So here I'm going in with the Honest Beauty Invisible Blurring Powder. And like I said, I'm just setting that concealer in place. And I also am doing something a little different here that I haven't really done on this channel before. I'm setting right underneath of the contour to give it more of a sharper line. And now I'm going in with the Hoola Benefit Bronzer. This is a really great one for warming up the skin. I love how it's so warm. You know, like a lot of 
bronzer shades out there just so more on like the cool tone like taupey kind of side and that's typically what I would use for a contour and what I like about this shade is that I can use it as a bronzer and really work this all over the outer corners of my face just to kind of add some nice warmth there so I also contoured my nose just slightly with this and I am gonna wipe away my bake that I did under my um under my little contour line there in just a second. I just wanted to show you guys every single place that I decided to put this bronzer. And I also wanted to use the Ofra Cosmetics highlighter in Rodeo Drive. I put this right on the top of the cheekbones and I was crazy impressed with how pigmented this was. It gives so much crazy glow. You know, sometimes with highlighters, I feel like I have to layer them on you know, pretty heavily to even be able to see them. But this one, you just lay it on really light and you can see it right away. It's awesome. And I also decided to put this same highlighter onto my brow bones as well. And then here I'm going in with my really big e.l.f. powder brush and just blending away all that bake, all that extra powder. And it's just gonna help blend everything all together so you don't have any harsh lines or anything like that. And it just looks nice and flawless. So going back to the eyes, I'm gonna finish off that lower lash line. I went in with the lightest shade that we had used from Over Cosmetics first. It's like that neutral brown. And I worked this pretty far down my lower lash line just because the upper eye is just so you know dramatic with the lashes. We really extended the eyes out, made them look bigger. So I also wanted to make my lower lash line look bigger as well, just to kind of equal things out. So once I got that down, I blended through a little bit of that warmer shadow Coco Bear into the outer corners, and then I worked on the Foiled Pigment Legend with an angle brush very carefully into the inner corner area of uh, both eyes just to bring some of that like eyelid shade down to the lower lash line as well because I kind of wanted to mimic that same look that we had on the upper lash line. So that's it for the eyeshadows, guys. To finish this off, you just wanna use a little bit of mascara. This is the Maybelline Lash Sensational, one of my favorite drugstore mascaras. I used it to blend my natural lashes into the falsies, and I also put it on my lower lashes for some extra definition there. Okay, then for the lips, which is the coolest part, and I was like seriously really impressed with how this turned out, I first used a brown eyeliner. This is from Smashbox. It's called the Always On Gel Liner in Brood. I worked this onto my lower lip first, and then I worked on the top lip, because the top lip's always like a little bit harder for me. For the lower lip, I just lined it as I usually do, you know, start in the outer corners, and then just fill the whole thing in. For the upper lip, you have to be really careful with this, because, you know, this eyeliner, it's kind of hard to get off, so once you get it on there, you can't, you can't really make mistakes with it. So I first started by lining the um, sides of my upper lip, and then I lined the cupid's bow, drawing it slightly bigger than it is naturally. And then I filled in the entire lip. And once you have a good layer of this on, then you can work on your metallic liquid lipstick. This is from Smashbox, brand new, I just got in the mail. And this is the whole reason why I wanted to do this look because I was so excited to use this liquid lipstick. It's called Brains in Bronze. And it's basically just like a bronzy uh, liquid lipstick with a bunch of shimmer, like metallic sparkles in it. I laid that on right over top of the liquid lipstick and it looked so freaking cool. I was like, yes, I am feeling this. I was so happy with the way that it looked. So I set my makeup with the Kapari Coconut Rose Toner. It smells really good. It's sulfate free and paraben free, silicone free, cruelty free, all that good stuff. As for the hair, this style is very similar to ones that I have done on my channel already. I know I am totally obsessed with updos and I love incorporating braids into my updos, but this one is just slightly different than the others that I have done in that we are doing a double braided bun updo. So on both sides of our head, we are doing a braid. So I decided to go with a Dutch braid because I like how you can kind of fan out the Dutch braid and make it look bigger and more voluminous. It just gives a really cool effect, a Dutch braid versus a French braid where it kind of inverts and goes inwards. And I feel like you can't really see it as well, especially if you have thin hair. So a Dutch braid is really great for thin hair because you can, like I said, make it look bigger and make it look like you actually have like 10 times more hair than you really do. So I did a really far over side part there. I just did a Dutch braid going down 
tried to like keep it going straight down and I left a little bit of bangs out on both sides as well. I fanned it out slightly. I'm gonna fan it out more in just a second. And then on the other side, which you can see I'm doing here, I did the exact same thing, but obviously it's less hair. So you have to work to make sure you kind of fan it out so it looks at least sort of as big as the other braid on the other side. Or you can keep it smaller if you like that look too, totally up to you. So I needed some hair extensions because I was gonna do a big bun and my hair is short, so I couldn't get that bun, big bun look without the extensions. All you gotta do for that is just make a tiny little ponytail in the back of your head, clip your extensions around the ponytail, and then bring your crown section of hair over. I like to kind of tease it to give it a little bit of um, lift there. Bring that over all of the extensions so you can't see them. And then you can pull your hair into a ponytail. You can adjust, you know, the crown section of hair to make it look bigger. Give it a nice little poof back there. And once you're finished with that, bring both of the braids back and pin them in place. So it's kind of like a halo braid where it starts at the roots and then it goes all the way to the back of the head. It looks like a full circle of braids. Then you can go ahead and pick random sections from your ponytail, use a tiny little elastic and just put them in buns all over the back of your head. So I think I did about three or four sections of these, just making tiny little buns, put, like pulling them through into the elastic and then just adjusting your hair how you need to. You can pin things in place, uh, but I honestly needed only three pins. The elastics held the hair in very well. I was surprised, um, but it's nice not having to have a whole bunch of pins in your head for once. So I curled my bangs with my new me clipless curling wand, and then I just further fanned out the braids on both sides, and that is it for this entire look. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like down below. Just hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. And if you haven't already, you can click on the bell right next to subscribe. That way you don't ever miss any of my videos and you will always get notifications every time I upload. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.